four swag freezes and super archers and yetis take the triple on that one wow hey what's going on guys welcome to the queso cup swiss style format in today's war the teams are playing for a fifty thousand dollar prize pool and if they can make it all the way through this tournament a golden ticket to the clash of clans world championship we are halfway through a swiss style bracket here where the teams are trying to get three wins before taking three losses as triple elimination eight teams advance to the playoffs eight teams are eliminated let's go look at what the records are for the teams and so we can see exactly where the tournament stands right now as we can see on the left side of the bracket the teams that are 2-0 undefeated are RVNT, Prumania, Rapata Gaming, and X-Team Esports. The teams have taken a loss are those four sets of wars in the middle of the bracket here, including the one we're going to be covering today, Strut Esports versus Tarilla Tavaton. And then facing the elimination, about to take their third loss potentially here, Queenwalkers, Absolute Zero, Empire Gaming, and Tristella. So those teams will be fighting for survival here, and these teams will be trying to get in their second win and there are a little bit more buffer between them and elimination, but let's get ready to dive in the first attack here, guys. The attacks are about to begin, so cheer on your favorite team here, whether that be Stra Esports or Tarilla Tavaton. But here we go. Let's kick it off. Ast is live with a Super Dragon Flame Flinger attack here. He's got one Earthquake that he can use to activate the Town Hall. A couple of uh, balloons. Or one balloon, I mean, comes down to go take out this mortar here. He needs to get one more strike out. If he strikes the Tesla, he will finish off the mortar there. But he sends another couple of balloons at it anyways. And this needs to keep that Archer Tower under control. Did run into some traps there, but he handles it like a champ. And he will keep this Flame Flinger moving strong into the base here. Keep an eye out for giant bombs in the area that could strike this Flame Flinger and make it miss that Town Hall. Doesn't have a lot of HP, so... Lots of little small things can add up into a big impact on how long that thing can keep on moving because it does slowly drain its own HP as it works its way into the base here. But the Town Hall activated by the Earthquake will now recognize it as a defense and be able to target it. No more traps there going off, but he's using up a full minute on his push into the Town Hall. He can get ready for the Super Dragons to come in shortly. Got lots of Rages, lots of Freezes for them, but no Poison for the CC. Which side would you come in here? I'm thinking left side. Left side, but if he goes in the left side, he'll get the defensive queen down early. And then come up on the back side of the center sweeper. He will need to get some troops to take the path in and destroy the CC and get the sweeper, the multi-inferno, and the defensive world champion. So getting them to collapse in heavily into the core of the base there is going to be very, very important here. He uses the baby dragon on the outside to form the funnel out there. The king and the queen come to the outside of the base there. We'll try to collapse that push into the middle base there. He'll engage the defensive queen. Side by side rages, and he will clear those compartments. He's got the CC pulled. It is super minions and a headhunter's out of there. He will deal with that without any issue. Lots and lots of red bombs go up by the Town Hall. But the Super Dragons continue on towards the middle of the base there. He's going to get the CC destroyed. The troops have already been drawn out and destroyed. So no worries about a Lava Hound there either way. But he will push his way into the multi front of the middle of the base there. One Dragon takes a Black Mine into the Eagle Artillery on the other side. The Flame Flicker does open up and a Dragon Runner pops out. Unfortunately, he gets burned up by the single front. Wait, take that back. He freezes it. He also freezes up the Defensive Road Champion. Able to get her down. And he's able to get through the single Inferno with the bounce shots of the splash damage onto that super dragon up there and that was a critical defense on that side there damages up the scatter shot here and now his road champion can start to swing her way through but unfortunately an archer ended up pulling a couple of ground skillies over there so she'll get stalled up on those for just a moment but the dragon steps in frees up the scatter shot and the expo will get that scatter shot down just the defensive board on the back end here the only threat but he'll completely overpower that and it looks like strut esports We'll open up this war with a three star. Pop that RC ability, basically swag right there. And pass it over to Tyrell Tavaton. And we'll see what they got. And at the end of the war here, if you're watching this later on YouTube, we will go over the result of all the wars. So there is going to be a spoiler there at the end of the war. If you don't want to know the result and you want to watch some of these wars later on, then uh, bounce out of the video at the end there. But we'll only go over and put that at the end of the video. Vayne kicking off for the next attack here. Super Dragons returning fire. Two Super Dragon attacks here to open up the war for the players who have the least amount of time to plan. When they spot a weakness on these bases, they'll try to take advantage of it. He puts an Inferno Dragon at the bottom, but the Tesla defends the Archer Tower. But that uh, Inferno Dragon will step in there and finish it off there, hopefully. 
Yes, barely. <laughs> Sending the Super Dragon. What was he doing with that uh, bottom corner there? Was that a funnel for the heroes? To go in after the Eagle Artillery? I assume it was, right? But the dragons will push their way towards the Town Hall. One dragon almost locks on the Town Hall, but then splits off. He'll freeze it. Was working on the bottom flank there. One super dragon split all the way up to the top side there. A super minion CC is not going to be too much of a problem here. But the single inferno in the middle of the base there is. He needs to get a lock down. He freezes, catches it on that one there. The super dragon that is lagging behind there is going to finish off that town hall. He gets a single inferno down into the defensive row champion. Needs to get her down as well. The raged up super dragon trying to take her down. The warden is attacking the defensive king. It does take that defensive row champion down right as he. Loses that Super Dragon, so that's good. The Warden gets knocked back away from the single Inferno and unfortunately is going to get taken out there. Left into a dangerous spot there. He's still okay here overall. Super Dragon up top there. Might be able to make his way in and pick up that air defense. I don't think it really matters if it does or not because he's out of air troops right now. I don't know. He may or may not have this. The Battle Builders repaired the single Inferno though and that's going to put a big obstacle here for his Royal Champion. He's going to need a burner ability and a freeze to get through that. And we'll see how far he can go from there. But he goes to the mortar first. He will step over to the single now. We'll see how far this queen can go. She still has her ability. If that single goes down, he's got a little bit of a chance here. Sends out a minion to go pick up that builder hut that was left behind. The queen will circle through. Still having support there from that row champion. But a wall is blocking the queen from getting to this expo and this scatter shot. That's going to be a big obstacle. She's got a lot of time to work with here has her ability intact and her unicorn is healing her up there while she circles around the outside this could still happen potentially but look a little bit grim i don't know i don't think she's gonna what if she circles all the way north here to pop her ability now to get some distraction from these defenses but i think the expo and scattershot combination are gonna do her in there and there she goes 97 percent to the final here to open up against strut esports and strut We'll start off with an early lead. Mask is live. Coming in with a queen charge into Dragon Riders. Maintain the lead here for his team. Queen. Eventually going to the status shot here. Maybe we'll be splitting off and going over the town hall. Maybe just wants to reach the defensive queen over the wall there and split off and make her way towards that town hall. Definitely a possibility. Seems to be going that way. Healer's deployed on the far left side of the queen here to make the entry without going to the Scattershot range there. Already from the now to push the king into the Scattershot compartment. Actually, with the queen clearing up ahead of the king, the king might end up attacking the wall and going into the multi-inferno, but it's the timing right here because the queen needs to pull the CC and fight it in front of the king so the king doesn't get stopped up there. But he'll wall break the queen in, will get the wall break into the town hall compartment, rage up as he fights the CC, poison up, and the king is looking good. What wall is he going to attack here? Goes to the the battle builder there. It's a little bit unfortunate. We'd love to see him go into the multi-inferno there. We'll see if he eventually takes that turn. A couple of blues pass up the queen there and the king actually circling in to go in front of the queen and we'll work on the trash over there while he takes out the cannon in the corner there with that balloon and that actually ends up protecting the king for a moment here he takes the eagle artillery strikes there the eagle artillery will now be targeting the queen here so he needs to be careful cannot go invisible with the queen otherwise it will potentially target the healers he needs to be very very mindful of that he'll rage up as he takes the town hall down puts in the stone tower starts in the dragon runners in from the far right side of the base there to go after that defensive King and the Eagle Artillery and the Multi-Inferno there, but he will have to get the defensive king out of the way there. So the headers come down to assist. The ward ability protects them and the world champion from that king while he works his way through. Freeze up the Eagle Artillery, drive his queen through that single on the town hall compartment and into the defensive world champion. That'll take out the major threats there for this world champion on the back end of the base. And then Eagle Artillery frozen up again. He's got two more freezes for the far back end of the base. The queen used up her last rage there. If she steps in and tanks this last expo and scatter shot while everybody makes their approach there, he's in a really, really strong spot here. And look at that. She does perfect positioning for the queen who still holds her ability. Mask is looking good to carry through. I'm calling it now. It's another triple for Strat Esports. Putting the pressure on big time here, right out of the gate here for Torilla Tavaton. Not want to move down to that lower bracket here. Both of these teams hold one win, but they need to rack in three wins to advance into the playoffs here. Mask will put him into a good spot. Conan is live. Super Dragons with bats for Torilla Tavaton. 
Not afford to miss here. Find some ground skillies right as soon as he drops in onto the outside of the base there, but is able to power through, get the flame flinger. Did take a little bit of damage there, but not too much. Bring trap onto the giant. See if there's any more traps in that corner. It's already been trapped up, so it might be trapped even heavier. Looks like uh, Boom perfectly predicted that they were going to come in with a flame figure for that corner. Did put some traps to see how much he wanted to commit into that. But the flame figure will continue on. Does not have the traps triggered right next to the wall, so he still could have giant bombs against the wall right there that could mess up this flame flinger. So far, so good. Safe. Put out a couple of the trash buildings along the bottom of the base there with Sneaky Goblins. Getting up a funnel set up over there. Is he going to push dragons through the town hall here? I think he might. I don't know what the plan is here. Tesla pops up by the Flame Flinger though, and... Yeah, it did start onto a giant bomb, but it's doing okay over there. It's doing okay. It gets the Tesla down. Spent a lot of time on this Flame Flinger. We'll actually be able to take out the Mortar potentially through the Flame Flinger. But here comes the Super Dragons, pushing Super Dragons directly through the Town Hall. Will be an interesting approach here. But he gets that Flame Flinger to take out the Scattershot on the left flank. The King and the Queen working along the bottom of the base there will circle around the Scattershot. There is an opening in the far right side, uh, side of that compartment. So we'll see if they end up going in there and deal with that Scattershot. But the Dragons go right through the Town Hall. Freeze up the CC with the Single Inferno and power out of the Town Hall Poison. Ward is still standing inside of it for now, but he's trying to get out of it. He does step out of it now. Sweeper knocks him right back into it. Fighting off the defense of CC. The Sweepers were knocking him back a little bit there. The Tornado Trap pulled him back a little bit as well. The Super Dragons do split off over to the Scattershot. The Bats start at the top side as the World Champion sneaks in there to get that Wizard Tower out. The Bats will try to make their way into the single Inferno. Does he have what he needs here to make it through here? This multi for the middle base here is still going to give him trouble. He's got a couple of freezes. He'll lock up the wizard tower on the right side. Lock it up again. All the beams of the multi are tanked except for one. He'll freeze it up now. The dragon takes a red bomb, but the bats don't get hit. The bats into the eagle artillery and he's got it. Conan will get the super dragon bat triple on this one. And Strat Esports. We'll have that triple responded to with the triple in kind. And they will stay within reach here. Three buildings and a star still separate these teams. That was a little bit close. That was a little bit scary. But Conan pulls it through exactly enough to make it happen. Boom is live. Boom coming in with a queen charge into Lalo. We'll be making his way in with the... Archer Tower immediately target his healers. He needs to get that down. He needs to take off that Archer Tower now before he loses another healer. It's targeting his, his, his unicorn right now, but the Queen does pick it up there. Okay, he's fine. He's okay. The Queen's gonna go north though, and that Archer Tower is gonna pick back up on the healers here. Puts a baby dragon down on it though. I hope that baby dragon didn't have another job. Could have taken that with a balloon if he wanted to, but I'll have to use the baby dragon to do it. Fine, it'll work. Super Wall Breaker to get the Queen to travel. Upward. I don't know what the point of that is. He's got three more super wall breakers, so maybe that was just a setup for the king to go to the scatter shot. Look going north though. I don't know which way he's gonna end up going here? Goes invisible with the queen to get the hound off of her. The hound will go up in there and fight. Actually, it's gonna come back to the queen, but she gets a single inferno down while she was invisible and while she had a little bit of uh, room to work there. But he puts a wizard down to get the header off of the king. Circle back down south and. If he goes with another wall break to go deeper in the base there, but the World Champion comes in down on the right side. Finds a Tesla there, but will also be met by some ground skies. He's going to stall her up for a little while. Queen will be able to fight off the defensive Queen, but her healers are stuck in the tornado trap right there. She has no healing for a moment. He freezes up to give her some time to work. The healers come out of that, go search back forward, take a double red bomb, a triple red bomb, but they're hanging on for dear life. They all go down. The Queen's healers are down. Boom's in trouble here, but the Queen with her ability still has enough to take out the multi in front of the middle base there. The Expos are going to drop her now. The Slammer will get down that scatter shot. And the balloons will distract the single inferno for now. The slammer does open up early. Word ability goes off here as he still has a lot of base left to go. More balloons collapsing in down the line there, but no more hounds providing taking up in front there. There's still a dragon runner still in the mix. 
The air defense down. More balloons into the back end of the base here. He'll freeze up the archer tower and the scatter shot. That's going to give him a little bit of a chance here. He might be able to make it through. He hits the haze. Get in the scatter shot. He's got it. Boom. With another triple from Strut Esports. It looked like it was in trouble, but he did a power through anyways. Very nicely done. With plenty of time to clean it up. The queen charge was not necessary to survive to the end of the attack here. And Strut Esports will maintain their lead in this war. Staying perfect for three attacks here. Put the pressure back onto Torilla Tavaton. And we'll see what they got here. Get that defensive king out of the way here. Close out the last storage and rack it in. Usvi is live. Coming in with a drag bat. Drag bat got it done once for him. Last time with super dragons. We'll see if they can make it happen again. Loving the bat attacks here. Bats are one of my favorite spells in Clash of Clans. There's always so many interesting things that you can do with them. But it's about control. It's about dealing with all the splash damage around the base here. Getting it all completely under control. Having a plan for every single piece of it. And so you can move a bat swarm through the base. The king will get pushed in by the queen. They go to the scatter shot compartment. The queen will continue along the top of the base there. Where she'll be going after maybe two wizard towers. But she will be intercepted there by the defensive king. As she makes her way that direction. But it's where a champion will come in and go after the defensive world champion. And another wizard tower here. So... We're counting three pieces of splash damage defenses dealt with so far. There's the CC pull as the king moves in. Queen takes out the wizard tower on the far left side there. RC will not quite get that wizard tower down before she gets locked onto by the defensive world champion. She went to ability, almost dies through, and she needs to get the last shot on that wizard tower. Take it! Yes! Got it! Got it! Okay, queen! With her ability, we'll get this other wizard tower down. She's not locked onto it. She's locked onto the king. He puts in a raged up electric dragon on those sides. A raged up e-dragon will one-shot the air defense there. And here comes the dragons in from the bottom corner of the base. They're taking advantage of the funnel that the e-drag is forming. And that e-drag is getting some killer value over there. Beautiful chains. Really, really chaining deep in that base. But instead of the blimp, the blimp will travel through. We can protect it with the ward ability. And it can travel in and take out the single inferno and that town hall. All single infernos on this base is ideal for bats. You'll start in a golem on the far left side there. And you'll take advantage of the tank you provided by it to get through the wizard tower and the teslas. And start the bats in to collapse their way through the eagle artillery. Still need to get the town hall down. He does take it right there. No more splash damage on the far right side of the base here. No more splash damage anywhere throughout. The bats step in, and they will get this eagle artillery down. Hopefully they don't take a strike there. What is taking the strike there? Oh, the bats were actually getting targeted by the eagle artillery, but they were inside the minimum range. They are sweeping through strong. They cannot go down to traps because bats cannot trigger the traps themselves. So they will carry through to the back end. Throws down the baby dragon to give him a little bit more tanking and some cleanup over there. And it is going to be a triple. Beautiful execution on that one. Love what he did with that E-Drag. Nice spot with the chains there. Worth that rage. And the funnel that it formed there got the dragons through to get exactly what they needed. And he's able to clear out all the splash damage. And he will close this one out unless these bats end up getting a trap trigger on them by that baby dragon. That would be devastating. But I think they'll take it before the baby dragon gets close enough. And it is going to be a triple, guys. That could have been a scary moment right there. But he's able to pull it through. Noosey closes it with just a baby dragon and his bats. Tryhard! Coming in for Strut Esports next attack. It looks like he throws down the flame fling. Wait, what was. What's happening there? Is that a graphical error? <laughs> I mean, I think the Eagle Artillery is on fire. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why the graphic for the fire spirits was down there. But he zaps out the multi inferno in the middle of the base there while the flame flinger will take advantage of the queen charging her way in there to go get the expo and using the skeleton spell up ahead there to take the defensive grand ward the queen is going to help get that eagle artillery down and then the flame flinger will break off to the left side and go get that single inferno down value out of that throw a champion joins in with the king over the far right side needs to get through to the defensive queen here needs to get the scatter shot the queen and the cc this queen finally goes to her ability there she'll join with them 
The Flame Flinger does hit some traps there, opens up before it reaches the single Inferno. But a Dragon Runner pops out of there, and the balloons and the Dragon Runner might be able to push through, and he can start the Lalo to meet up with those balloons there, but a couple archers are on them, and see yeah, how far he can make it through there. But right now, that uh, Dragon Runner is going to take out that single Inferno. He is going to Lalo through the Town Hall, so just lets that Flame Flinger troop go down, and he's just going to grab a little bit more out of those... Uh, and that dragon right there, but the queen is stuck in the hand right now. The king survived. He did lose his royal champion at some point in there, but he had ward ability and actually the ward abilities are protecting headhunters. Yes, the ward ability protected headhunters that were inside of that ward ability as he passed through the town hall. They got the defensive royal champion down as he made his way through. They'll search their way across there. <coughs> Lock onto the defensive king, and as I die, the base is dying as well. <laughs> All right. This is this is crushed. This is crushed. He will power his way into the last air defense. There's too many blues here to stop this at this point. It's going to be another triple here as Strut Esports will maintain this heavy pressure onto Tarilla Tavaton. And Tarilla Tavaton will stay hunting for the defense. They're going to have one more opportunity. Their only chance to make the comeback here is going to be to stop Yo Yo at a 97% or less. And they're going to need. To match this triple with another triple of their own. This is a crazy war from two absolutely stellar teams. Valcone Barberi will come in with a queen charge into Lala with a flame flinger. A couple sneaky goblins, yetis triggering traps there. Getting this flame flinger to have its lane cleared here all the way towards the town hall. Able to draw out a Tesla a little bit deeper in the base there. As the queen comes in from the bottom of the base here with her queen charge. Gonna go into the scatter shock compartment. I don't know if he intended... I don't... I doubt he thought she was gonna go into that compartment there. So that could mean he needs to make an adjustment here. He puts in a wall break on her left side. Another wall break to push her onto the eagle artillery. And I wonder if he could get the king to go into the channel instead. I s assume he wanted the queen to go into the channel. And he's just gonna have to make some adjustments here. The Flame Flinger will take the Town Hall, but it's not going to make it through those Expos over there. So it'll pick up whatever value it can there, and we'll see what comes out of it. But the King comes in the far left flank. Let's see what the King can do over there. Flame Flinger will finish that Town Hall off without any issue. The Queen pulls the CC, and we'll go up to the storage, and then I think she's going to wrap into the Eagle Artillery Department. The King definitely is. He will go into... Left side of that compartment to take out some of these arch towers and engage the defensive king. All of his barbarians are spawned right there. They'll help him get through the ground skellies and get through that defensive king, potentially. We're going to circle back north now. All the ground skellies all over the place. Everybody's got barbarians scattered across the area, and he will get that down. Out comes the troops out of the flame flink. It looks like a couple of balloons, maybe a dragon rider popped out of there. I'm not sure, but he does start with the Lala from that side. Still has his royal champion on standby. The queen burns her ability to get through the wall. She ended up attacking the wall there, not rounded the eagle artillery department. So that could be a little bit of trouble there, but she will assist in getting the defensive royal champion down. Engages her and she will get her down, but he might be in trouble here. Royal champion sweeps from the top corner. She'll go out to the scatter shot. All the balloons are down except for two that haven't been deployed yet. This queen is on her own here, but the warden is assisting. The air defense is going to shoot the warden down though. That eagle artillery finally dealt with here. Cannot reach the air defense over the wall, but the Royal Champion is sweeping through. She will assist. He needs some support on these cannons on the top side. If those cannons take out the Royal Champion, he's in trouble. Royal Champion steps into one of them. Baby Dragon picks out the other one. Queen is getting her healers hammered there. Drops in some balloons on the top side to go assist the Royal Champion, but she will run to the defensive king. He's got the invisibility. Skip the king. Skip the king. Oh, <laughs> maybe that wouldn't do it. I don't know. I don't know if there is a solution here. He's in trouble. He's got 18 seconds left. He needs to get that builder hut down on the right side. Sends in some uh, minions to go pick it off. He's going through the wall. She's going through a good wall. The goblins are distracting up top. The queen is not going to have enough time to finish it, though, guys. She'll go invisible. She'll step her way through. Get another Tesla down. But the queen attacking the wall and going through the core of the base is going to cost him this triple. And that is devastating here for Tarilla Tavaton as Strut Esports is now two stars in the lead and they will rely on Yo-Yo getting a one star. Yo-Yo 23 is live with a Queen... No, a Sui Hero Lalo here. He needs to get a two star. If he gets a two star, they will lock in their win here. 
We're going to take out the defensive queen there with this queen ability as King of War Champion continue on to the Eagle Artillery. He has not had the CC pull. And he will get some good value out of this. The queen is able to poison up those uh, headhunters and unfortunately she's going to die out there. But he will get the headhunters down. Roar Champion trying to get that defensive Roar Ch or Grand Ward down and he is able to get it. Pops the ability. Try to get into the expo now. His ability. The unicorn comes over and helps assist the Roar Champion and... Doesn't quite get the expo down. That's all right. That's all right. Needs to get the town hall. Just needs to get the town hall. Secure the win here. Don't take any risk. He's almost at 50%. He needs to rack in a little bit more, though. He gets a pop to attack the town hall as it pops off the hound. And that will lock the uh, town hall down here as he rages up and ward an ability to go through. And Stra Esports locks in the win against Tarillatavaton and will advance the score to two and one. They need one more win to secure their spot for the playoffs, but Tarillatavaton is also not out. They will move down to the one and two bracket and face the other one and two teams and fight for survival there. But it looks like he'll easily close this one out. And Yo-Yo 23 with the heal spells. He moves to the Ult Inferno. Absolutely tears up this base. He's got another poison they can use to deal with the Hound Pups there. Once that thing pops and his CC troops are still inside of his Stolz Hammer. Dropping in Blooms for cleanup on the back end here. He's got two freezes on top of everything else here. And Strut Esports come out swinging and they do not stop. Three stars across the board here and a perfect war to set them up with some momentum into their next match. GG Strut. We'll go into Torilla Tavaton's final attack here and then we'll take a final look at all the scores across the league here. We'll see how everybody's doing and we'll see which two teams are the first two eliminated. One day sale coming in for the final attack here from Torilla Tavaton to close out the Warless Chiribon here. Let's see if they can get triple here and hopefully they can carry that momentum into the next war. They did get a perfect war in the match that they won before this against MS Esports for the opening war of the day. But we'll see if they can uh, take this one here and get this triple. It is a. Uh, whoa, what is this? You see? It's super archers and yetis? I was like sitting there talking. I wasn't even paying attention to what he was actually attacking with. He just spammed in a log launcher and super archers and yetis across the bottom of the base here. Yetis are spread evenly throughout there. He does get the Roar Champion in to go clear up the scatter shot on the far left side. The Queen's taking the other one in the middle base there, or maybe the Yetis are, but he's able to get both of the scatter shots down into the single inferno. We go, what on earth? There's no way. At least they end it interesting. He's got uh, th four freezes for the town hall. Oh, he's got it. He's got an ice golem right there as well. He's got super archers all. Whoa, whoa, nicely done. No way, the Tarilla Daviton smash coming out for the closing attack of the war and ending it with style. Four swag freezes and super archers and yetis take the triple on that one. Wow. <laughs> Holy cow. Holy cow. That was wild. <laughs> right, let's go look at scores. Let's go look. At our leaderboards here, holy war, Perumania takes down RVNT with a perfect war in the upper bracket and they will be our first qualified team for the upper bracket and they will probably be our number one seed of the tournament unless they somehow locked out an overall combined scores of the wars there to X team who locks in the other undefeated position there advancing the score to 3-0 they will be our second team to advance into the playoffs now everybody else here that is going to be 2-1 and one are going to continue on looks like that is going to be uh, Genson Clan taking down Affiliate Esports. That is a 14 star war. Nice performance from them. War and Glory racks in another triple against Tomp and I Empire. Closes out their war there. Tomp and I going to be moving down to one and two and face elimination as War and Glory has to get one more win. MS Esports 
wins their war on percentage against another GB2. 13 to 13 percentage win for them. Strut Esports, we know the result of that. Queen Walkers are out. Three misses at the opening attacks of that war and the closer there. 96% from Yuta to close that one out. So Absolute Zero will fight for survival for a little bit longer. Maybe they can make the epic comeback, but Queen Walkers is out and it looks like after Empire Gaming put up a perfect war all the way through, they finally slip on the finish line and Tristella will survive in the lower bracket with a perfect war as well. So crazy, crazy turn of events there, guys. But now we have more wars. The teams will continue the fight. We'll keep this rolling.